Hey everyone, welcome to this fourth or fifth video in the ongoing series that I'm making related to introducing Java programming and development. So the last time I just went over defining and basic usage of arrays and we got into using them a little bit in our code just to print out um, some numbers. So I had also briefly mentioned that I might get into a discussion about member access controls and I never did it. So I'm going to use this video just to touch base on that and then I want to go over one other thing and we'll make this a quick and short video. So now when we talk about uh, member access controls what we're really referring to is these keywords public, private, and static. And so we know from earlier that, that a class in Java is made up of variables and methods. So if we take for example a class that we'll call my class, we have variables and then we have methods and in this case we'll make one method called add and we'll declare that as public. We'll have another method called subtract which we'll declare as private and then we'll have another method called multiply which we will declare as public static. And so now if we were to go and create a new file, a new class called foo, we could create an instance of that object my class from up here and use this object to uh, if we hit period and then invoke a method in this case we'll invoke the add method which is okay due to it being publicly accessible so that would work out fine again we could do my class instance dot subtract but in this case it wouldn't work because this has been declared as private up here in this in this uh, class rather so we couldn't actually reach it and then finally we could do the generic my class without using the particular instance of it and we could reach this multiply method due to it being public static accessible so now just to demonstrate this a little bit if we go back to our eclipse and to our first project hello world we had these four class files that we made all existing in the same package and what this means is that basically these can interact with each other's methods in certain ways depending on how we've set up our member access controls so if I just go to the first program and I will type the name of one of our other classes for example bill calculator and I'm gonna hit period and now something's broken here and let me just go back and we can see that we have access to all of these methods and Eclipse lets us know in this little window calculate tax and calculate total so if we go look back here we can see that at the bottom we have these three methods that we've created one called calculate tax one called calculate total which we saw there and another called private static tally which we actually don't see over here and the reason for that is because the tally method has been declared as private whereas these two are public so now if inside of the bill calculator class in the main method we type the same thing and hit period we see that tally actually appears in this window as being reachable to us and the reason for that is even though it's private we're operating in the same class file so even though it's private it's accessible to us and we actually used it up here to calculate the tally of all of the items in our list so I'm gonna take that away and then now hopefully this will make a little more sense if you're confused. We'll create another object. In this case, we're going to create a string object named name. And I'll just store my name in it. And so we've taken the class string, created a instance of that. So we have an object instance of string called name, and we assigned it a value. And so now if I take the generic string class name and hit period as we did before uh, we have all of these methods that are accessible to us 
and you can see that these are actually static by this little superscript s here which just indicates that it's a static method but we would know that because we're invoking it through the class name and not an instance so let's go back and use a particular instance one that we created here called name and so we'll do name and when we hit period we can invoke a lot more methods as Eclipse lets us know and this is because these have been declared as public and not static whereas these are the static methods so the only way to reach these is to make a particular instance of a string so hopefully that just gives you a little overview and maybe a little insight into the difference between using these public and private and static keywords um, and now I just want to jump into one other thing which is the use of uh, this I++ operator and particularly I want to let me just erase this and go back over it the I++ and plus plus I essentially mean the same thing they're both increment uh, operations but they can do different things depending on when and where you use them so for example we'll make an integer X and we'll assign it 5 we'll make another integer Y and initially not assign it anything so now we're going to assign into Y X plus plus and we'll do a system.out.println and we'll say y is and plus y and then system.out.print x is and then we'll add the variable x into there and now we're going to run this we can see that y is 5, x is 6. So initially x is 5. And we're going to take that 5 and store it into y. And then x gets incremented. And it happens in this order because of the location of this plus plus. So because the plus plus comes after the x, we're first going to store this. And then we're going to do this and if I had actually done the plus plus X and run this what we should see is that they both come out to the same value of 6 so in this case X is 5 we get here we're taking that value 5 we're going to increment it by 1 and then we're going to store the result of that into Y so when we print it out they're both indicating that they are six and so that covers pretty much everything I wanted to get into really quickly with this short video and I think the next time I'm going to get into creating a few other objects particularly I want to get into creating um, a scanner object and allowing you to start taking in user input and then we can take that user input and start doing uh, certain things with it so we might even actually get into the usage of the if else statements and maybe even a while loop. So check out the next video.